I have a vector going 10 newtons up and to the right at angle theta. Many of you have seen this vector be decomposed along the x and y axis into its x and y components. What this would look like would be drawing a vector straight along the x-axis and a second vector straight along the y-axis such that we make a box or a parallelogram with our force vector. We can figure out the, the magnitude of the y and x component using trigonometry. So in this case, if we're interested in the, the y component, we can say the sine of theta is equal to force y over 10 newtons, or the force of, in the y direction is equal to 10 newtons times the sine of theta. And we can do the same thing with the x component. We could say the force in the x direction is going to be 10 newtons times cosine theta. It's important to highlight that both of these components act along, act at the origin here, um, not over here, which is what the triangle would look like if we added the vectors head to tail. We're allowed to move vectors along their line of action, so we can move this vector up and down along its line of action, but we're not allowed to move them perpendicular to their line of action, and so drawing this vector over here would be incorrect. Now, this is the same thing as saying that the force in the y direction plus the force in the x direction these are both vectors is equal to that 10 newton vector that acts up and to the right at 30 degrees. Now, what might be less familiar to you is the fact that just like you can decompose vectors along the x and y axis, you can also decompose vectors along a more arbitrary axis. In this example, I might want to decompose along an axis that we'll call u, which acts at an angle phi from the horizontal, and another axis may be v, which acts at an angle of beta from the horizontal. Now, u and v don't have to be perpendicular to each other. They can be at any angles we want them to be, as long as they're on the same plane. Um, so again, we can draw a parallelogram. So we have um, our vector component going along the u-axis. We have this line, which is parallel to the v vector, which is over here. And again, we can also draw this uh, top side of our parallelogram like this. Now we have a parallelogram describing the shape that we can use. Now we have a parallel. So now we have a parallelogram that we can use to do all the trigonometry we need to find the vectors u and v, which are the components of this 10 newton force along these arbitrary axes. Now, why might we want to do this? Well, if this 10 newton force was being held up by a structure which had members that were at the angles beta and phi, if these members were two force members, then the force in these members is going to be 
the components of this 10 newton vector along their axes, in this case u and v. And so this could be really useful if we need to know the force in these members in case we're trying to design uh, these. Now, it's important to look at our, our knowns and unknowns. We have a couple of variables here. We have the angles of each of these members. We also have the magnitude of the force in each one of these. Now, we can solve for two unknowns in this, but it doesn't have to be the, the force vectors or it doesn't have to be the magnitude of the forces. It could be the angles at the forces to give us a certain magnitude. In this example, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be given the angles and I need to solve for the magnitude of both of the forces, which would be the magnitude of the forces in these two force members. So let's say that beta is equal to 20 degrees, theta is equal to 25 degrees and phi is equal to 10 degrees. Well, this angle here is going to be this large angle theta minus this small angle phi. So 25 minus 10 is going to be 15 degrees. So this angle here is 15 degrees. This angle over here, we can take this is, we can draw a horizontal here. We know that this angle phi is going to be um, symmetric to this angle here, and so this is going to be angle phi, and then this angle is symmetric to this angle beta, and so this total angle is going to be beta plus phi, or 20 degrees plus 10 degrees is 30 degrees. We can solve for our last angle, this top angle. Um, there's 180 degrees in a triangle. If we subtract the two known angles, 30 degrees and 15 degrees, we get that this top angle is going to be 135 degrees. Now that we have all the angles and we have one side, this is a great problem to use the law of sines on. So if we want to start by solving for this, this vector, u, then we can write out 10 newtons over the opposite angle, sine 30 degrees, is equal to u over the sine 135 degrees. And that gives us that this that the component of this 10 newton force along this u axis is going to be 14.1 newtons. Similarly, if we want to solve for the vector v, which is acting over here but is same in length to this line over here that I've dashed in, we can solve 10 newtons over sine of 30 degrees is equal to v over sine 15 degrees and we get that the v component is going to be equal to 5.2 newtons. Again, both these vectors are going to be acting at this point but we've decomposed them, this 10 newton vector into arbitrary components along these two axes of interest, which are more useful to us than the x and y components. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and if there's any ever a topic that you might feel that's helpful, feel free to comment here or send me an email.